Hi, my name is Marcus Rojas, and this is my article presentation for Dr. Baylog's MBA 500 class. And I decided to do this presentation on digital Taylorism, which is an article that I found on The Economist. This article is directly related to one of our main topics for this week, which is scientific management. So I decided to give a little bit of context on what exactly scientific management is. So scientific management is a theory that was created by Frederick Winslow Taylor. And the meat of this theory was that you could increase productivity by simplifying jobs and just optimizing them towards the employee. And obviously there's a lot more that goes into this theory, but that's, I guess, the big meat of it. And he also believed in not necessarily making workers work harder, but just finding ways that would simplify their lives and make the work more standard. These are the four main principles of scientific management. And the first one was to essentially get rid of the idea of like using your gut feeling for something or using habit or previous methods and Taylor wanted to look specifically at the science to try and figure out what is the quickest way and the best way to perform these tasks. And the second one was rather than just giving workers random jobs, you wanted to match them with what their capabilities fit and how they were motivated or what they were motivated for. And then using that would ultimately increase the productivity. And then another one, which is the third point, and this is a very big point for Taylor, was to monitor work performance and to also provide instruction and supervision, sort of, sort of like micromanaging, uh, to make sure that employees are using the most efficient ways that they were taught. And the last one is to make sure that they allocate the work between managers and workers so that the managers can do their jobs and then the workers can do their jobs that they've been performed or asked to perform. This article talks about a so-called modern digital Taylorism. And a big part of this article talks about how Amazon uses digital Taylorism in their style of management. And essentially it's a very cutthroat style where they're, the Amazon employees are being ranked constantly and there's always feedback that's coming from management. But when they're ranked using new technology, which is where the digital aspect of it comes in, then management can monitor all kinds of different aspects of the job that were previously not managed because of lack of technology or for whatever else means. And another part of this is that in this synopsis, like employees are ranked and then they usually call the worst workers. The second company that is mentioned in this article that is using a so-called digital Taylorism is Google. And similar to Amazon, Google uses the same sort of call the lesser performing employees and also ranking them. And specifically, Google has a process that ranks employees on a five-point scale. And it was interesting that the article threw in that the employees at Google uh, actually don't mind too much of being not exactly micromanaged, but the sort of ranking process where everything's super competitive because the pay is well. And they sort of put up with it because, you know, they get to work at Google. With this new modern Taylorism theory, there are pros and there are also cons. So some of the pros, which are somewhat obvious, are that the workers are much more efficient because of a competitive workplace, workplace and also because of the pay. And some of the pros are, it's proven in this article that these companies do get results because the companies are Amazon and Google, which are extremely successful companies and are known as some of the best places to work at, regardless of the digital tailorism that's being implemented there. And also a big pro of it is that management is able to see some areas of concerns and make corrections a lot quicker than if something wasn't monitored. And a, a general idea of if something is measurable, it can be managed. So I guess the more eyes that you have that are on the workers and seeing what they're struggling with or what they need help with, that's something that can be managed and fixed. 
Now, some cons of modern Taylorism, if it gets out of hand, is the big one is micromanaging employees, which takes away, like, completely takes away the creativity and like the joy that that employee could have had at their job. So it restricts, you know, future developments if you're in an area like tech, just from being micromanaged. And also management, if they continue to micromanage or push workers to the extreme, they could start a burn and churn process where employees just get burnt out and then they're not as productive as they used to, which eventually lends to them working somewhere else or the company just being hurt in productivity overall. And also when employees are treated like numbers instead of people, motivation in all senses goes down. Uh, employees seem to not feel worth or not feel worthy up there. And then it can also lead to a bigger problem with like HR and stuff like that. Just to give some analysis on the article, people are the most important asset that a company has. So there needs to be a lot of thought and consideration that goes into any kind of practices that would issue any kind of uh, restricting processes or something that wouldn't let an employee do their job effectively. So I believe that using new technology to monitor results and to look at performance is a very good thing as long as companies don't go overboard with it. Once people start to get micromanaged and they start to feel like they aren't worth anything at work, then productivity is just going to go down the drain. And it's also important to note that competition is a great motivation factor as long as it's done properly. And it's also unavoidable. Like businesses are extremely competitive and in order to keep a competitive edge, you know, management needs to consider new ideas. Applying this article to my personal work experience, for the last couple summers I interned at Facebook and I could actually see a lot of different aspects of digital tailorism happening there, but personally I didn't have any negative experience from it. So for example, Facebook has peer reviews, I believe twice a year, and they also have performance meetings with managers, you know, depending on how high up you are. And for me, my work was very flexible, and I was always encouraged to be creative, and it still had that similar uh, tech startup feel. And competitive competitiveness was actually always, always present at Facebook. I mean, it's, you know, one of the top companies to work for. And the competitive competitiveness was never avoided, and it was also encouraged. And there was also a lot of competitions that Facebook personally held in order to bring out the best in their employees. And I wasn't micromanaged at all. And like I said earlier, I just could apply a lot of creativity to my job. And I was encouraged to go and seek some of the other aspects of my job that I liked more than the ones, say, I didn't like. And my manager would use that information to kind of tweak uh, my upcoming assignments that I was going to do at Facebook. And working for working hours and like logging all of that, all of my time, my time in, time out and days off, uh, I all did it by myself. I mean, my manager wrote off on approval, but as far as like just tracking it, it wasn't anything like a ticking time card or anything like that. It was... Uh, it didn't make me feel worthless or feel that I was, you know, always being watched over. And overall, it was just a great experience. So, I mean, I could definitely see, according to this article, the I could see the negative sides, but I personally didn't experience any of them. And I, I experienced only the very positive aspects of digital tailorism at Facebook. To wrap up my presentation, I thought about two open-ended questions. And the first one is, have you experienced this type of digital tailorism before? And if so, was it positive or negative? You know, I talked earlier a lot about the pros and cons of digital tailorism, so I think it'd be really interesting to see other people's experiences. And the second question is, do you see digital tailorism changing management in the future? As I said earlier, the article talks about the success that Amazon and Google are having with it. And because of that, do you think that more companies will try and adopt a modern type of digital tailorism in the future? And that is my presentation. Thank you for watching and listening.